today we are in Dallas. That's right. Have made it to Texas. Getting pretty far out west. See the Texas flag there. That's actually a rainbow flag there on the left. Even Texas celebrating Pride Month. Good for them. So our first stop is going to be the infamous Dealey Plaza. If you'd like, you can pause right here to kind of remind yourself what went down here. This map shows the exact route of the president's motorcade. And that motorcade would have come right towards us here on Main Street. Would have made a right right at this intersection. Followed along here and then made this left right here on Elm. And it was at this very intersection Lee Harvey Oswald was believed to have fired those shots. The sixth floor of this building you see right here school book depository building and right here the center of your screen on that road is exactly where the president was when he got shot famous video of the assassination one that probably most of us have seen it's actually taken from right here right here on the grassy knoll people believe there to have been a second shooter located somewhere right here. This is definitely one of the biggest conspiracy theories in American history. These guys are debating it right now. A little more from downtown Dallas. Dallas is a big city. Uh, downtown area is kind of just a small part of it. There's a big one. something that caught my eye. All right, that, was, that was terrible. Look at this thing. It's got to be 30 feet tall. Freaking huge. We're watching you, Dallas. Man, pretty cool. Fortunately, you cannot go in there. Giant eye is all locked up. Too bad. We're at City Hall Park, which I didn't even realize is partly a cemetery. Give me some cool artwork here I want to check out. You know you're in Texas. City Park has cowboys and oxen. And not just one or two. Good God, there are dozens of these things. And they're freaking huge. definitely one of the more interesting pieces of public art I've seen in any town I've been through. There is a lot of, I don't know if they call them bulls or oxen, but good lordy, there are just so many of these things. And they're big. I swear the back of them is at least as tall as me, so I mean like around six foot. I'm sure this area has a history of being used for this sort of thing. Okay, making my way out of Dallas proper, head west a little bit, check out some of the other areas. Nice. This cool suspension bridge. Take us over to Arlington, I believe is the next stop. Just checked in. I love that I get a microwave and a fridge. Definitely gonna use the fridge. Already filled it with goodies. Oh. And best thing, right next to Six Flags. Love that they have opening windows. I don't get that often enough anymore. <laughs> Not too sure why. Oh, look, the thing's going. Yes. Oh, I can't wait. All right, day two, Texas. At Six Flags over Texas. And we are definitely riding this first. Oh man, that was legitimately one of the best roller coasters I've ever been on. Alright, on to the Titan. This one's a beast. Definitely a good one. It's one of my favorite experiences. It's just the ridiculously high drop. Man. Heights, heights get me, for sure. I think that's part of the fun. This one's a lot like Goliath, which we have at Six Flags in California, Southern California. 
but a little bit different. This one, a little more intense. I almost blacked out on it twice. Definitely right in here. I think that's pushing about eight G's I read online. And man, it's, yeah. That green one I just rode, Shockwave. It's actually the tallest looping coaster in the world when it was built. It's like the tallest in the world, tallest any kind. And uh, kind of shows you where we were at in the 1970s. Because to be honest, it wasn't that exciting and it was rickety. Steel coaster too. It yeah, has no business being that rickety. But eh, kind of glad they left it. I always got to stop and do this type of ride. Another one you see in many theme parks. But I said heights. Heights do it for me. They've got this old timey mine ride. 1966, this one was built. Well, hello, this is your ride. They could be behind you on your ride. And please make sure to go check out. Just chilling. Any proper Six Flags, they've got a Batman themed area. Star of the show here, Mr. Freeze Ride. Just... It lifts you up backwards, drops you straight down, facing down. Batmobile. I love they still got the old Michael Keaton looking one. It's definitely my favorite Batmobile. Here is the Batman attraction. Inverted coaster. It's a big old spinning thing. Midler. Midler's Revenge. Last few remaining superheroes that aren't under the Disney umbrella, just yet at least. Now we've shifted back over to Old West theming. Pretty cool little facade, Old West, not too bad. It's not quite Disney or Universal status, but you know, they're trying. This one was kind of tough to find. Runaway Mountain. I'm told it takes place entirely in the dark. That was a pretty cool one. Kind of like a low rent space mountain. Now we're over here in the Spanish themed area. These are always pretty fun. Just a bit stomach wrenching. They've got this really cool old bobsled coaster. As far as I know, God, this might be the only one. I don't know of any other rides like this in the country. There's no tracks. Just go down the tube. So this one actually does offer single rider. Now, if you don't want to wait. Come on and by yourself. You have to jump right in line. Okay. 
is a unique one. No question. That's right. <laughs> that was fun. Ah, pretty cool little vintage car ride. I don't think that's one for single male adults, so I'm gonna skip it for today, but it does look pretty cool. Anyway, as you can see, sun has come out. I'm not entirely sure if that's good or bad. It got a little less humid, but it's it's up in the 90s. It is a hot, hot day, but God, I just couldn't say no. I gotta ride this once more. How can you not? This is definitely their best, their best one. Bell o the ball, as it were. Oh, I haven't even gotten up to where the line starts yet, but that's my wrap it up today. Man, talking about dang old tar playing, man. Dang old Texas, man. Some George Strait. Eh, how about not? Well, back to the van. Uh, I know that within two minutes of getting in the van, I'm gonna be cold. Not just comfortable. Cold. Ah, it's coming. It's coming. Ah, back on the road. Ice cold in here. Oh, it's so nice. It's been more than two minutes. It's probably been about 15, but oh man. Woo! I was pretty sure it's on the cusp of heat stroke. That was out of control hot. Whew, about 95, which boy, I've seen higher temperatures than 95 for sure. But man, not like this, not muggy. And, oh man, so even at 11 a.m., right when the park opened, the first line I got in already smelled like people and sweat and just, oh, I saw one mask today. One mask on probably like a 17-year-old kid. And a lot, of the, a lot of the lines, there were still these like guards up to keep you from breathing on the people next to you, I guess. So just no, no airflow at all. Even if they had a fan, it probably wasn't hitting you. That <laughs> shit's pretty bad. There's like old people there too. I don't know how they do it. But I don't know, maybe if you're just used to it in Texas. But, oh man, is it good to be somewhere cold again. Yeah, we're out in eh, central-ish Texas now. Ah, I'm here to El Paso. It's about nine hours. Yeah. So, mm, it says I'm 19 hours from San Diego, which doesn't sound, doesn't sound that bad. Mm. I'm going to be a little high for this last stop in Texas. You can't not have a Whataburger. I'm going to see if they'll let us wrap one for me. Poor girl had to go ask the kitchen staff if they were capable of doing a lettuce wrap burger. But, you know, once they figured it out, they actually did a heck of a job. Nice little sunset this evening. Just enough clouds to really set it off. Just about at the end of West Texas, edge of this time zone. It's damn near 930 Taking some of these pictures. Camped out at one of the nice rest stops here and heading into New Mexico next. <laughs>